This podcast is brought to you by iFixed. If you are listening to this podcast with a cracked screen, stuck power button, or just want to change the look of your smartphone, you need to go see these guys. They repair your smartphone, tablets, and MP3 players, as well as accessories. If you're looking for an honest, quality electronics repair shop, this is the place for you. Ask for the Junkies discount to receive an automatic $5 off any purchase, no matter how big or how small. Again, that's the Junkies discount at iFixed. That's I-P-H-I-X-D. The Junkies podcast does not reflect the views of Utah State, Utah State Athletics, or its affiliates. Soccer advances in the Mountain West Tournament, volleyball is on a major hot streak, and women's basketball is just getting started on today's episode of Junkies. How's it going, Aggie fans? Kyle Haywood here, Blake Hadfield, and we are pumped to get to talking some women's soccer to start things off. It's been a little while, Blake, since we've been together. It has been, <laughs> and I'm like itching, itching to go. <laughs> it's been much too long, uh, and and we apologize to you, uh, to you listeners out there who, who we know you're just you can't wait to hear from us. You can't wait to hear about <laughs> all these awesome sports. Um, so we're just gonna pop right into things and go ahead and get started. Big news of the week, Blake. Utah State soccer is uh, is looking good to start things off in the Mountain West tournament. Yes, they are. Uh, I was able to watch the game on this. It was actually a really good stream last night on the Mountain West Conference site. Uh, and but even better than that is our girls looked awesome. They totally dominated the match the whole way. Had had all the possession, all the uh, attacks blew them out of the water on uh, shots as well as shots on goal. And uh, it was only a 2 nothing win, but it was it was a pretty convincing win for sure. They definitely showed the, the maturity of we have been here before, we know what we're doing, and we're not going away. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you look at that, um, just looking, I'm just looking at the box score here and how many shots and how many shots on goal we had. Compared to Nevada, who looks like they they really struggled, um, to the point that our goalkeeper Natalie Stoven only had to have make two saves to get the shutout. Yep. You know that's that's solid that's solid defense. But the thing you don't realize is that that's all that's also plays all the way up through the midfield and strikers as well. The fact that they were controlling the ball so well keeps. Yep pressure off the defense and I think that when you have when you're not continually pressured you're not going to break down as easy you can regroup you know those 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 girls in the back you know Brooke Larson Levitt uh back there you know I know that she's she's one of our our staunch defenders and and when you have people in the back like that that can regroup and get uh get ready for the next wave to come it it definitely helps it does and uh to that point like you say, the, the midfielders, the attackers, all did a phenomenal job and uh, had most of the possession. But Nevada had a few really, really nerve-wracking counters that you thought, oh, this is a huge opportunity for them. And uh, that defense stood tall when, when they needed to. They, they hustled, they were there, and uh, they were stingy as ever. Awesome. We had a new scorer on the season. Uh, Amber McCallson gets her first goal of the season uh, in just only in just 37 minutes played is is all that she was out there but she she snagged a goal on her only shot of the whole game yeah uh, it was a free kick and it was one of those I actually <laughs> so I actually missed it live just because I had the Twitter account open and I was like she's gonna score I'm pretty sure this is like about to go in, and so I made sure that I was like ready to you know, ready to tweet it to, out, like tweet it, <laughs> and then like it went in already, and I was like, oh, I knew it, but then it was stupid anyway. But yeah, it was a rocket, a perfectly played shot. It was, it was awesome. No, it's it's good to see um, that that the that we have other um, players stepping up and and are ready to take and make those big shots because that's one thing that as you look through the schedule lately. Um, I think we counted what nine games in the last nine games. I think the Utah State's only given up four goals, something like that. Forgive us if we got that that set <laughs> wrong, but it's it's something like that. In like nine or ten games, we've only given up four goals, and so our defense. I honestly think our defense could take us very deep into this Mountain West mm-hmm. tournament. But I think that the the X factor for the Aggies is going to be 
getting the the ball in the back of the net. I think that we could see some definite uh, one zero results. A two zero result would be would be even better. But um, if we can get some some solid pressure on our opponent's back lines, um, we'll definitely. Uh, I think we've got a shot to go very deep into this tournament and definitely open some people's eyes. Yeah, for sure. Um, which kind of brings us to our uh, one of our Twitter questions this week uh, comes from Trevor Weller. He says, how far do you see the soccer team going in the Mountain West tourney? Blake, what do you think? So I think this is a this is a tough scenario because they will be playing tonight after we record this. Uh, <laughs> so if we make a prediction and, and they yeah. lose or they win, <laughs> yeah. But no, I after watching in this season as well as watching them uh, in their opening tournament game, I it's a tough situation tonight. You know, it's a quick turnaround, less than twenty four hours. They've got to play the host school in New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico had you know the first round by, so it'll be a tough scenario for them. But like I alluded to earlier, this is a mature team that has they can hang their hat on their past experiences in conference tournaments, and I I really see them coming out and uh, and standing tall in a in a tough battle tonight. And uh, I so I, I see them winning. I see them. Uh, I s- making me not sound like an idiot by the time you all listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you, so you think they're going to win tonight. Do you think that they have a chance to uh, make it through the semis and into the final game at all? I, I think they definitely have a chance. It, it's been, you know, it's been pointed out that it's, you, you don't want, uh, that seed where you have to play constantly. That's a lot of soccer. It's a tough thing to do, but this team's so tough. And, uh, Head coach Heather Karen has, has just done a phenomenal job with. Uh, she mixed up some of the rotations last night and everything. I it is not out of the question. I'm I'm counting on watching them play in the championship game. Awesome. I uh, I don't think that's that's too far off. Um, like you said, the the point is is that they're gonna play if they do make it to the the final game. That's four games in four days. That's tough for any sport, especially soccer. Yep. Soccer is one of the sports that going back to back is just it's nearly impossible um but the fact that they're doing it four games right in a row four days right in a row excuse me is going to be it's going to be a tough test for them but that being said i think that there's some definite depth yep in our defense and you know the old adage defense wins championships there's some major depth in our defense um from two different keepers that are solid as well as a, a solid um, back line. And even our even our midfield is pretty deep as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I think that if they can keep their fresh legs, if Coach Karens can keep substituting and allowing the, the girls to come out and, and get a, a bit of a break, I think that you can see maybe those four games, maybe uh, – Maybe you, you kind of flip the tables and you say, you know, we're we're warmed up, we're ready to go. We've been playing games, and we're going to come at you. You know, they could they could take it that way as well. I as I've been uh, following sports, it seems like especially in the postseason tournament scenario, I you can just it seems like you can always bet on the team with the momentum. It just seems like that momentum means so much more than any other factor almost. If you can build that momentum and that confidence and really get rolling, uh, it almost doesn't matter if you're tired. Oh yeah, um, no, I, I totally agree. And it's funny that, you, that we bring up you know the um, the the fatigue factor um, because one thing that I wanted to to bring up and, and discuss with you a little bit as we've watched some of these soccer games. Um, I kind of want to put together not necessarily like a, a an all you know MVPs of the season, but I think that if we I kind of wanted to come out and, and maybe mention a few a few uh, Aggies on the team that have shown some serious hustle throughout different games, different points of the season, and I kind of wanted to put together a little bit of an, an all hustle team, um, in, in my in my uh, opinion at least, um, and just kind of to start things off, I think that there's. There's a someone that we missed right at the very beginning of the season, but since she's been back, she's done some serious damage for the Aggies, and that's Jen Flynn. 
Um, I think Jennifer Flynn has been fantastic as she goes, as she comes in and, uh, and makes some serious noise. Um, in that win that they had yesterday, she had three shots, which is, uh, tied for the most on the team. And at one point, uh, I have to double check if she still is, but at one point she had played, you know, four or five less games than all the other, um, all the other girls on the team, but she was leading the team in goals. And, uh, and I just think that someone like that, you know, it takes skill to put the ball in the back of the neck, but it also a lot of time just takes hustle. And so I wanted yeah. to give her mention on that all hustle team. Do you have uh, do you have someone you'd like to add on to that? Uh, I when you first said hustle, I immediately thought of Jessica Hoskin Kilpack as a defender. She's there. She's been one for me where there's times I'm like, oh, there's a real opportunity for the other team, and all of a sudden she's back there. And, uh, and I know she has some serious wheels, uh, as well. I know hustle isn't all about just speed, but she has it. And she, she also does. has a lot of, she also has a lot of grit as well. No, I, I agree. In fact, it was funny as I was putting together the, my little list for the all hustle team. The first name I wrote down was Jessica Hoskin Kilpack. And that's because of that exact same thing. Um, two other quick mentions, uh, that I'd like to give out before I give my all hustle team MVP. And in my opinion, first off, uh, is Brooke Larson Levitt. I think that they're, she's in the back line along with Jessica Hoskin Kilpack and those two, I, I don't know if I would trade those two for any other, uh, defenders in, um, in the mountain West at this time. I think those two, uh, they're, they're tall, they're big, tall girls that can, uh, that can muscle their way around, but they're also very fast. They've got long legs and they cover a lot of ground very quickly. And I think that those two, you know, going along with their, with their size and their physicality, the fact that those two hustle the way they do has won a lot of games for the Aggies and kept them in that. The other one, um, is Taryn Rose. I think Taryn Rose has been fantastic, uh, this year for Utah State. Um, but going to my MVP, uh, who I think is probably the first one I think of when I think, you know, hustle. She totally embodies this is Mari Mayashiro. She is constantly yeah. at a full sprint. She never, ever is jogging. It seems like she is constantly at a full sprint throughout, throughout every single game. Um, I mean, there was a, there was, I think two plays right in a row against UVU way back early in the year that she flat out went and just took the ball away from someone. Uh, I think she passed two other Aggies on her way there, but just went on a dead sprint, ran up and just took the ball away and then Mm -hmm. went the other way with it. Um, And that just blew my mind. The fact that she's so quick and she's so tough the way that she hustles around the, the field. I think that she's, she's my all hustle team MVP for the year. Her, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, and second that, and uh, just as an added shout out from last night, her goal last night was so freaking awesome! <laughs> Holy cow! And and it was intense because I had uh, I had predicted that they would still score again, and then there's like a minute and a half left, and I was like, no, nah, they're not gonna let me be a liar. And uh, <laughs> Mari Mari really bailed me out, like I say, with an awesome goal. Well, that was nice of her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm glad that we agree on that. Well, so uh, so Aggies, if uh, this obviously isn't going to be done before Utah State plays tonight, but as uh, if they go ahead and win tonight, as Blake and I both are predicting, make sure that you that you check out their game t- again tomorrow night. Um, well, I guess tonight, if you're listening to this tomorrow, which is weird. <laughs> the the sixth of November, you just blew if my no, mind. <laughs> November sixth. As you're listening to this, check out um, Utah State's and just go to utahstateaggies.com and it's right. It'll be right on there. Yeah, just link just right go to there. go to soccer. There's a link right there and pull it up. Um, if it's not, if you know, if that's not working, go to I believe it's the mwc.com. Um, they'll uh, it, it'll be on there as well. Uh, a streaming of the game. So go ahead and watch that. Give them a throw. Give them a shout out on Twitter. These girls have played an awesome season coming into the Mountain West, uh, which has some great teams. The Mountain West has some some very good soccer programs, and they've got they've come in and held their own. They've definitely stepped up. Our hat off to you, uh, women's soccer, and we hope to be uh, we hope to be talking about you again uh, some more as we yep. um 
as we uh, record again soon. All right. Looks like we are about to go to our volleyball team, who has been fantastic as of late. Yes, Blake. If, you, if you have not been hearing wonderful things about our volleyball team recently, you are uh, You're dead. not looking <laughs> in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they are amazing. Um, I take my wife up to most of their games now, um, most of their home games, and it's – it's amazing. They are playing extremely, extremely well, um, and uh, and honestly, I think it, it it begins and ends with Coach Dubose. Yeah, um, the guy's a fantastic coach. He's a fantastic motivator, and uh, they went through a little bit of a rough patch, but lately they have just been slaughtering teams. They've been playing very well. Um, they went through a little patch where they lost three out of four games right in a row to Fresno State, New Mexico, and Air Force. Um, or sorry, not Air Force, New Mexico, Colorado State, and uh, Fresno State. And uh, and I mean they weren't close. It was you know three to one, three to zero, three to one, and and they struggled. Um, but since then they have won. Let's count it: one, two, three, four, five. Six games in a row, and then took number nine undefeated Colorado State five five, ma- set. five sets, and just about took the match in that fifth set. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Blake? What 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 do you think is uh is the difference for the Saggy team? I think a lot of it is uh, they're they're gelling, and and they've been they've been a, a closely knit unit right really right from the start. But uh, it I think that's starting to come out. Uh, you know, now and really be shown there, you know, you talked about head coach DeBose. Uh, he's always going to do a phenomenal job. Um, and his girls are always going to want to play really hard for him. And, uh, I, to be able to bounce back from a slump and answer, <laughs> go off on a huge win streak. Um, three of those were at home. They had the four home matches in a row, but, uh, you know, the other three weren't. And it's not easy to win a conference game at home either. Uh, to be able to respond with a huge winning streak like that, I, I think it takes a lot of uh, confidence in your coaches, yourself, and your teammates as well. And uh, they've got it. They do. Um, now, the thing is, is their next few games are uh, – two of the next four games are at New Mexico and versus Fresno State. So – those other two teams that they lost to in that uh, in that little rough patch, they've got a chance to go come back and make uh, and get a little revenge on those teams. Um, the fact that they've played so well, uh, I think you know, just along with what you were saying, uh, Blake is is a huge um, is a huge deal just from their coaches, but also each of the players. Um, you watch their bench. You know, they've got mm-hmm. some girls on their bench that get excited and are cheering them on and are coaching and are yelling and and are there supporting every bit of the way um, those who are out on the court. This is a team top to bottom, you know, from from starters down to the brand new freshmen. They're all they're all right there. Um, and you know what? As as the more that I watch about volleyball, the more I've noticed how Utah State really plays to their strengths. Yeah. Um, they've got some players on the team that uh, have weaknesses, obviously, but but make up for those uh, by by focusing on their strengths. Um, going through, I mean, just looking at some of these names, um, Rachel Orr has been playing fantastic. Been she can hit the ball so hard. She surprises me. Um, I mean, if if you were to go just, I mean, there's a trio of powerhouse hitter, hitters yeah. for the Aggies, and that's Rachel or Ellie Brainerd and Caitlin Van Hoff. Those three, when they get a hold of the ball, watch out. Um, yeah. I would hate to be trying to return anything that those three hit because every one of them just comes across with so much power. Um it's it's amazing to me. Yeah, I was I was just thinking that uh, when you're talking about how hard they hit, and I and, you know I've seen them hit. It's like you know what, I, uh, I I'm not a big tough guy by any means or anything, so maybe this statement doesn't mean anything. But I'm pretty sure I would want nothing to do with attempting to block any of those. <laughs> and I will say this to my credibility, Doctor Hilda Fronsky, professor at Utah State, she once told me this is a true story. 
Like I would take you on my volleyball team any day. Hey, there you go. <laughs> but that so, being said, I would turn and run away if one of those <laughs> if you were playing were against those yeah. three. No, I agree. Um, and there was there's a there's been a couple times that a ball has caught another player. I believe. Let me look at the schedule again. I can't remember what game it was. It was um, UNLV, I believe. UNLV, I was watching, and um, I believe it was Rachel Ord caught a hold of a ball, just just went for this huge spike, just just hit it perfectly and so hard, and it went down and ricocheted right off a girl's face. And I just, we, everybody around us were like, oh my gosh, like, is that girl going to be okay? Like, the girl was all right, but I was surprised. I probably would have had to ask for herself and gone off crying because I seriously, I thought the girl had broken her nose or something. She hit that so hard. Um, and those three uh, up top, I mean, obviously, you know, they're where a lot of the points, you know, they get a lot of attention because of the points. Um, but I think that there's two names in particular I wanted to talk about uh, as far as um, when they have their defensive special specialties as well, um, and that's Hannah Gleason and Ashlyn Rogers Court. Mm -hmm. Those two, uh, those two have just this knack, and especially I, first I want to talk about Hannah. Hannah Gleason has a knack for being in the right position all the time. As I watch. Uh, as I watch this, these games, I watch Hannah because she's so fun to just watch her go through this progression and move because when the other team hits it, it's almost like she doesn't have to move. She is there exactly where she needs to be. And I know as a hitter, they're told, you know, look for the opening and try and hit it there. You know, and as they're as they're going to do that, Hannah seems to be right there every single time, like not even not even an issue. She just she's she probably has the best uh volleyball court vision mm -hmm. as far as a, a defensive player goes that i've seen on the team um and that goes for both opponents and our team as well i think hannah is fantastic that way yeah her uh i don't I, people talk about basketball iq i don't know if they talk about volleyball, volleyball IQ, IQ. <laughs> but and, and i don't even know if it's iq or like you say it's almost like this uh intuition she has this feel she has this grasp of just uh, knowing where she needs to be. No, she she totally does, and and she's not alone in that fact. And I'm and I'm not uh, gonna say that Ashlyn Rogers Court is is uh, any less of a defender because Ashlyn is incredible. And you, before we go into that, the fact that she has her husband there at yeah. as many games as he can go to. I know he, uh, Jefferson is is he's a tight end on the football team, and so he's gone a lot. Um, I can't imagine fall time at their house. They probably never see each yeah. other between school, traveling, their games. They probably never see each other. Shout out to you two, uh, for 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 doing what you can to uh, to to help us Aggies. And hopefully, as uh, as both seasons wind down here, you get a little bit more time together. Yeah. Um, and also make sure that your uh, kids that are sure to be awesome make sure they stay make sure in the they Utah come to State Utah State. System. Yeah, we, if, we want we want those courts <laughs> playing. Yeah, we need our... we need some more tight ends and liberos uh, coming yeah. up to Utah State. Um, but Ashlyn, I think you know she has that same vision that Hannah does, um, but she's she's quick out there on yep. on the court. She you know she if she isn't in the right position, she gets there fast. And she seems to always return it exactly to where uh, Paige, the setter, so Paige doesn't have to move. Um, Paige is up there, you know, kind of ready to go. And it seems like Ashlyn, when she returns it, boom, Paige doesn't have to move very far before Paige sets it up for, you know, one of our power three to go through and just smash it through the other team's face. Um, but just wanted to, to focus, just talk about the team a little bit. Um, that some of these role players, and um, we apologize to to a lot of uh, a lot of you players that we're not going to get to tonight because we're pressed for time. But we just wanted to to make big, give a shout out to those um, those ones that we've talked about, just because we've seen that this win streak and this hot streak has come a, a lot of, a lot on on your shoulders. Um, and we know it's a team sport, but we wanted to to just make mention of a few players that we thought had had made a a good push to uh, um, to step up and, and make a difference in, in these games. Um, so a little looking forward for, uh, for Aggie Volleyball. Um, so they're hitting the road now. 
after they uh after they had a little bit of a homestead but they're they're heading out on the road they're gonna go hit up air force and then new mexico air force for the first time for the ever f- for the first time ever the initial game got postponed because of the yep. um the government shutdown but they're gonna play air force now at colorado springs and then they're gonna bust down to new mexico um and play at new mexico now new mexico has there's two girls on new mexico's team that can jump out of the gym um, and I think that that might have been something that maybe they weren't prepared for before because I think between those two players that New Mexico had that were just skying over the net, it was incredible. I think that now – I think I have confidence that Coach DuBose is going to go and make some adjustments to keep those two in check because yeah. I think it was – those two pretty much won the game for New Mexico, um, and, it, and it wasn't even close. Those two um, – I don't remember their names or their numbers, but I remember watching and, and they had two players that could just jump higher than anybody else on the court. I think Coach DuBose is going to focus on that. He's going to make some adjustments, cover that up. Um, but I think we're going to need a big game from our middle blockers. But we're going to need a huge game from both Ashlyn and Hannah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to both need to come out and be there for when those those two girls do get up and happen to get up over our blockers. They're going to need to be there. Um, I think that's gonna be the game that sets the tone for the rest of the for the rest of the season. So we'll definitely be watching to see how that plays out. We're stoked. Um, women's volleyball. The next home game is going to be uh, San Jose State, um, November fourteenth. Come out to that, and then fr- we get Fresno State at home two days later on the sixteenth. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're supporting these ladies. They do a fantastic job. They are killing it, and we expect some big things coming out of them. And they've come closer and closer each time they've played undefeated Colorado State. They lost 3-1. to one. They lost 3-2. to two. But now, the next time they meet them is going to be in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have a feeling we're going to come out with a win 3-2 to two or a win 3-1 to one on that. So uh, so let's get out and support these support these ladies and uh and uh, i know coach dubose would definitely appreciate that as well well so uh kyle mentioned being a little pressed for time we uh one of the big reasons i guess we'll call it half of the reason (laughs) is women's basketball is in action finally tonight or yesterday (laughs) that's still blowing my (laughs) i'm just just ignore any time i try and talk about a time (laughs) continuum because i can't handle it We'll talk about tonight's preview, and then you just immediately will know whether we were whether we were right or not. <laughs> so we'll talk. We're just going to talk a, l- a little season preview. Talking about we've got some solid newcomers coming in, um, and uh, and some big time returners. Uh, Blake, we lost one of uh, one of Utah State's best l- women's basketball players of all time. DC, um, she. Uh, she was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, she, the all time, the all time leading scorer, um, for Utah state women's basketball. But guess what? There's some, there's some, uh, um, there's some girls that are looking to step up and, and shoulder a bit more of a role. I almost feel like this is going to be a year for women's basketball, similar to the year when, when JC Carroll, was in his senior year with Utah State. They were successful. They they had a good season, but when he left, everybody thought, "Oh no, what are we gonna do?" Uh, he's you know he's gone. J.C. Carroll, you know, all time leading scorer, phenomenal player. He's gone. What are we gonna do? We're definitely gonna have a fall off. Let's not have our expectations as high. But what did the team do the next year? <laughs> they went for like thirty wins, you know, yeah. or or something like that. They went out and and just had one of the uh, one of the best seasons. Um, in the in the last decade that Utah State has had, um, and I think that women's basketball is is ready for one of those seasons as well. I agree. I I was actually at one of the uh, Big Blue Scholarship Roadshow things, and someone asked that specifically. Uh, Coach Finkbeiner was there, was taking some questions. Someone said, "Oh, so what do you do to uh, replace the the scoring output?" Uh, of Devin, of of Devin, and and he, I don't remember his exact answer, because for one thing, I don't have a super great memory. For another thing, he's a better speaker than I am. <laughs> uh, but but one thing that he mentioned is uh, it, it will be a challenge that you can't 
get around the fact that she will be missed. It would be a disservice to her to say that she won't be missed. But uh, he said we, we have girls that are ready to step up. And, and the system that Coach Finkbeiter runs is awesome. And one of the many reasons you should come out and watch the basketball team is that they're going to score points. They're, they will. They're, they're going to go fast, and they're going to put a lot of points on the board. No, and uh, and they've got some girls that, that can do that. Um, let's talk about, first of all, they've got three starters coming back. Um and and they're gonna play some huge some huge minutes and, and do big things. Um, I want to first of all talk about senior guard Jennifer Schlott. She um, she was kind of a, an unsung hero last year. I think so much focus was on was on Devin Christensen. That, and honestly, all three of these girls were that way. They played fantastic, and they're gonna take a bigger role this year. And especially Jen Schlott, um, she's coming in. Uh, it's her senior year. Uh, she was a second team all whack honoree last year. She averaged 14.3 points a game. People forget that yeah. because Devin was such uh, a, a prolific scorer. Jen had had 14.3 points every. You know, she she that was her average throughout the season, um, as well as going along with four and a half assists. Um, she's gonna be there. She is a huge threat, uh, especially back behind the arc. She can drain the three um, with the best of them. Um, but I think that she's, you know, along with being a scorer, she's going to be a big time uh, f- facilitator because we've got a lot of other scorers on the team. Yep. Um, we've got uh, the other, one of the, I think, kind of my X factor coming into this season because she was really catching on late last season. McKinley Williams, Mac, uh, she was starting towards the end of the year to really get Coach Fink's uh, system down. She was coming in, making some big plays, getting some good minutes, getting points, and and uh, and really handling the inside uh, rebounds. I think that she is going to explode this season. I agree. I just looking as a freshman, she averaged seven point two points per game, as well as four rebounds. Yeah. And uh, to to come in and contribute like that uh, as a freshman, especially when you have you know the senior all star out there with you. Uh, yeah, there, there's big things coming from her for sure. Oh yeah, uh, I was at the the WAC tur- the WAC tournament down in Las Vegas last year and, and was watching uh, these games and and Mac McKinley Williams. I'm gonna refer to her as Mac. That's what a lot of people call her. Um, Mac came out and and played a fantastic tournament. Obviously, everybody wasn't super happy because they didn't finish as well as they were hoping. But she had a she had a great tournament, and a lot of times you see the biggest jump in a player comes from their freshman to sophomore season because you they've had a year in the program, they've had a year getting up to speed, then they have a full off season to prepare, and then they come back and they're ready to go. Yep, their sophomore, junior, senior years um, are usually a lot better than their freshman year. So I think she's going to be that big X, X factor. She's going to hold down the middle and get some big time points. Um, and she's going to have a, a little bit of help as well uh, um, going forward. And and Mac plays – she plays a little bit of a stretch for her. I'm Sorry, I was going to go ahead and, and talk about Franny, but I want to go back to Mac. Mac plays a, a little bit of a, a stretch. She goes inside very well, but she can also play that outside game. Um, she's got a great shot. Um, she can go out on the wing. She can go in and, and, and bang inside with – with the with the bigger stronger girls she can play a wide variety on the court and i think that's going to cause a lot of nightmares for um for opposing uh, opposing teams um but the other returning starter that we have is junior forward franny vaulu Va- i'm terrible I'm... at names and i didn't prepare for this one i usually do <laughs> forgive me but franny uh she is kind of a She's a, a silent killer, is what I like to call her. Yeah, uh, and it seems it almost seems weird to say silent just because she's so tough. Yeah, not that <laughs> tough and silent are uh, synonyms or uh, <laughs> antonyms, I rather. But uh, yeah, it, it it almost seems weird to say silent because she she's tough. And yeah, like you said, I get where the silent portion comes in. She maybe didn't get uh, a lot of the the praise or whatever. But the uh, the contributions that she makes are definitely uh, going to be necessary moving forward for this team to be successful. 
Yeah, and uh, and she's she's a lot. She's a she's has probably one of the best fan groups that comes to the game. She always yeah. has family at the game cheering her on. That anytime she gets a, a big board or gets a block or gets gets a bucket, her fam her family goes crazy. Um, and that's one of my favorite things to to see when I go to these games. She's got a huge. Um, She's got a huge following as, as far as a, a, a fan family, you could call them. Um, but the thing is, is that not a lot of people keyed on her last year, but she went out and she did her thing. She came out with, uh, you know, she had averaged almost nine points a game and five and a half rebounds. Um, and that, again, is only going to increase this year. Um, her role is going to be increased along with Jen and Max. Um Look for some big things to to come from Frenny. I think there's going to be multiple t- games where she will be the player of the game. Yeah. Um. And we'll be watching. No pressure, Franny, but we'll be watching <laughs> for that. I think there's going to be multiple games where she will be the player of the game for sure. Um. We've got some new blood coming into the coming into the roster. A couple transfers that I think are going to do some serious some serious work for Utah State. Yeah. Uh, Mariah um, Miles from Oral Roberts. Yep. And Jasmine Porter from San Diego State. Exactly. Thank you, San so Diego they, State. That was very generous of you yeah. to give us Jasmine because you're going to regret that later in the season when we meet <laughs> you, and she just goes off for 20 in your face. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Maria and Jasmine both are – they've both accepted and uh, and really embraced Aggie, Aggie athletics and Aggie, the Aggie nation as a, as a, as a whole. They're both uh, they're both big time uh, ambassadors for the program, and they haven't even suited up in a single game. Um, they both sat out last season because they're transfers, but I think that that is scary for the other team. Yeah, as we mentioned with uh, with McKinley Williams being a freshman, and then making the jump to her sophomore year. Well, these two have been in the system for a year, and just nobody knows it. Mm-hmm. They because they sat out. They got to f- practice fully, got to get to know everything that Coach Fink runs, and they're going to come in immediately and make a difference. I, and there's there's such value. You never want to sit and watch, but there's there's such value for a player to game experience is important, but to sit on the sidelines you know, next to a coach and, and just sit and, and watch and observe and, and see what's happening and watch the system that you're going to be a part of that in the next year, uh, there's tremendous value. And I'm, apparently I'm going to see how many times I can say value in one paragraph, <laughs> but they're, they're definitely going to be ready to step right in and, and be big contributors. Definitely. Um, the thing, let's just talk a little bit break these two down just some highlights that that we grabbed off their profiles um maria played in 12 games at oral roberts um in uh in those 12 games you know she grabbed uh seven points had seven rebounds as well um but she was mostly kind of a, a come off the bench as, as you'd expect from a freshman and i think that she is going to fit in a little bit better at the system here at Utah State than she did at Oral Roberts. Um, I would not be surprised as a sophomore, uh, a redshirt sophomore, uh, for her to come in and make a big difference for Utah State. Um, she uh, she had a, she's a fantastic three point shooter. She she saw she shot thirty nine percent from from three point land um, and seventy five percent from the free throw line um, through high school. And so you know she's got that down. Plus she's had a, a year off to come in and really get to know this this uh, um, this offense that Coach Fink runs. Um, she's going to be good for this team. And and I'm excited tonight. Tomorrow, you know, last night for a lot of you. Tonight I'm going to head up to that game and and watch. Um, but uh, Jasmine Porter's doing a little bit of. Uh, she's going to come home. Uh, I guess you could say she she was or she's a Utah product. She went to Leighton Christian Academy here in Utah, but uh, she went out and play, started out playing at San Diego State, and now she's transferred back out to Utah State. Hopefully that means we're going to get a lot more of her family out here. But here's something, Blake. Jasmine set a single-game state record for points in a game with 51. Woo! She scored 51 points. She was a first team all first team all state and two A state tournament all tournament team as she uh um when she was in high school. Um and she went out to San Diego State. She played a couple years out there 
and uh, and then she came and transferred here. So she's got some serious experience. She's got some more scoring threat as well. Um, but she's, uh, I think that she's going to definitely come in and make some, make some noise. San Diego state's got a good program. Um, so she's played with some, some big time athletes out there. Now she's sat out a season. Um, and I think that she's going to come in ready to go for the Aggies. Um, just mentioning, uh, just running down real quick. We have also some, we have three new freshmen coming in, Elizabeth Landreth, Shelby Cloninger, and Lynette Johnson. Um, all our freshmen coming in this season. Um, not sure who's going to be redshirting, who's going to be um, playing a lot. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, and then we got a couple other transfers, um, international transfers, actually. Um, again, Blake and I aren't the best with names, so forgive us. Uh, Tiana uh, Jukic. I'm, I'm, you know, trying to get. I a, think I'm. I'm pretty sure Jukic. that's perfect. All right, I'm Tiana, sure, yeah. Tiana <laughs> Jukic. Uh, yeah, let us know, Tiana and Ingrida Strikas, Strikas, something like that, Strikas. Yeah. Um, but they're both going to be immediately available. So even though they're transfers, they're coming in and, and immediately going to start to play. Um, they don't have to sit out that that extra season. So big time things coming for for Utah State women's basketball this year. Moving into the Mountain West Conference, um, what do you th- what what are your predictions? Kind of some some out there predictions. We've got some major question marks. We're not really sure what to what to expect out of this out of this team. But what do you uh, what are you thinking, Blake? As far as as far as the season goes, what are we what are, what should fans reasonably expect from this team? Well, for one thing, on I guess just a game single game basis, uh, they they can expect to be entertained. For sure, Finkbeiner runs a, a a really fun program to, to support and to watch. They're going to put up a lot of points. Is uh, is one thing I I know DC is gone, but the uh, the players are still in place and the the system is in place. They're going to put up a lot of points. Uh, new conference, obviously, uh, so we're not super familiar with with a lot of the competition that we'll be facing, uh, and uh, I'm obviously clearly a homer but <laughs> i like to pretend that that i can kind of back it up i in women's basketball and this is this is no disrespect or anything it's just the way that it is they don't score as as often or a, as easily you know generally the shots don't fall quite quite as much but for utah state that's not really the case the, they light up the scoreboard, and I think that's going to take them uh, a long way and put them in a really good position to uh, come in and make a huge splash as the newcomers in the conference, as all of our teams have done, really, this this season already. That's true. That's one thing that we talked about, Blake, before we even started recording was how well Utah State coming into the Mountain West Conference has done and how a lot of the people were saying, oh, it's a huge step up. Oh, you're going to have some growing pains. You're going to have some teams finishing last. Well, we haven't so far. Our women's soccer, our volleyball, our football, um, and we're hoping to see both our basketball teams do it, have have really gone in and done just as good as you could expect from them. Um, you know, our, our volleyball team's playing solid uh, women's soccer. Um, honestly, we can legitimately say they have a decent shot at getting into the, that final game and who knows what can happen, um, when they get there. Um, and, and football as well, you know, you, you just kind of see, uh, we've had one in conference loss and that came the, the day after we lost our, yeah. our starting quarterback. And, uh, we really, we and we were, we drew the toughest conference opponent at the toughest, at the hardest time yeah, for the our worst team. possible time. But other than that, it, looking like we're probably going to win out and at least at bare minimum take second in our division and third overall in the conference. Um, and there's still a good chance that that football could go in and have a chance at a Mountain West championship. Um, there's a decent chance of that. So you see these the way that these teams have, have truly come along and and made some made a name for themselves. They've come in, they haven't sh- uh, shunned away from this newer, tougher competition. They've come out and punched some people right in the mouth and and made a statement and said we're utah state we're here to win we're here to, you know, and we demand respect um, yeah. and i love to see that 
Um, Blake, you mentioned how, you know, we're coming in, we're going to know a lot of, we're going to have a lot of new teams that we just don't know. But I think that at the same time, these teams don't know us. Yep. They don't know the kind of the kinds of things that Coach Feek runs because uh, with the exception of San Jose State, our conference has never played against Coach Fink at Utah State. Um, he was our brand. New, he was a brand new coach last season, and the only team that made that jump with us was San Jose State. So all these other teams, they don't know. They don't know Coach Fink. And while yes, Coach Fink is going to have his hands full preparing for a brand new conference that uh, that he really uh, that he doesn't know much about, he I I think that if there is a coach to do that, I have total faith in Coach Finkbeiner. Yep. He's a fantastic guy. Um, he's a good friend of the Front Row Network, and and we're excited to to work along with him and kind of see what he does um, out there. Yeah, I just again come out and support. I they they've it seems weird to say they've earned it already because they haven't uh played, played yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh just with with what the team was able to do last year and with you know the ambassador that that coach coach Fink has been for Utah State already and uh the the athletes he's been able to bring in that a lot of them are really really exciting. Um come out and support them it will do wonders if if you don't believe that your support as a fan can make a contrib- a contribution you're wrong you're you're really 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 wrong you can make a contribution in that game you can make a big impact on the outcome of the game as well as uh bringing in future recruits i recently as i've been reading about recruits coming in and and some of their quotes I, it's so much of it is the fan base that they were impressed with. So come out and support. I, it, it's going to be an exciting basketball team for sure. And uh, be a part of the the rise to the Mountain West. The, the teams have really elevated their games and, and done well. Uh, do that as a fan. Join right with them. No, I, I, I agree, and we've had some good crowd turnouts at both soccer and volleyball this year that you and I have attended, Blake. Um, and it's it's slowly growing more and more that it's not just football and men's basketball that get attended, but these other sports are starting to get more and more attention in, and we love that. As as true USU junkies um, and, and as these teams that we cover, we love to see you fans out there supporting them because they deserve it. Um, uh, you just look at, at at the home court advantage that our basketball team has had over the last decade um, and look at how our football team has in, has had uh, had a home winning streak, a huge home winning streak, um, you know, leading up to this year, unfortunately. But that was in big part due to the fact that we had uh, we had our our fans were there giving full support to those teams. And, uh, and I'm just excited to see, uh, more of you coming out, supporting volleyball the rest of the way, supporting women's basketball and, and really keeping your vocal cords warm in between those football and basket and men's basketball games by coming and cheering on these teams as well. Um, we have one last Twitter question, uh, coming to us from Brian Anderson. He says, Hey junkies, are you guys coming to the women's basketball game tonight? We do have an answer for you. <laughs> yes, kind of. <laughs> we're, we're splitting duties tonight. Yeah. This is this is why we make a good team. <laughs> exactly. That's why we have at least two of us working on this. Um, Blake's actually going to be covering the, the women's soccer team uh, tonight. He's going to be watching that, uh, tweeting out for uh, for all of you to follow. And obviously this is all happening. You're going to be listening to this after the fact, but I will be heading up um, and checking out the women's basketball team tonight. Um, I'm excited to see it. Should be a good game. Uh, playing Northwest Nazarene um, should take care of business. There's no reason that, that they should struggle with uh, Northwest Nazarene, but I'm excited to see these girls come out, get a little bit of chemistry flowing before they start to hit that out-of-conference schedule. Um, and I hope I'm not the only one. Uh, if you've listened to this and you missed the game last night, um, they have another game. Shame co- on you, first yeah, off. Shame on you. <laughs> Um, but they've got four more games after tonight's game. 
uh, that you have a chance to, to come and see. Um, on the 9th, the 13th, the 19th, and the 22nd, every single one of those right in a row is all right here in Logan, Utah, up at the Spectrum. So go out, uh, give these girls some support. What better way to start off the season than with five straight wins before they head out on the road for a little bit of a break until the end of December? But uh, let's send let's send these ladies out on that road trip with five straight wins uh, in their in their pocket, and that's going to come big time because of you fans coming out there and supporting. Come find us. Um, I'll be there tonight. Um, Blake's going to be around. I'll be at, there in the future at a lot of these games at volleyball and women's basketball. Um, come find us. You can just look for us on Twitter and kind of see what our faces look like or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, check us out. Come and talk to us. We'd, we'd love to have someone come and talk and say, Hey, you know, listen to your podcast. What do you guys think about this? Discuss with us, help us, um, help us out to, to hear a little bit more about your opinions as far as the teams go. Um, but with that, that's, uh, that's about what we have. We do have one kind of, uh, we do have one tweet from Ned Adams, uh, because, you and I aren't featured on the front row show. Uh, so he wants to know what we what we predict as far as the football team's bowl game goes. What do you think, Blake? So I think <laughs> we're going to win out is my is my prediction. And uh, so I'll get to my answer, just building up to it. Well, you got to use a little background. I also, <laughs> I would be amiss to not at least hope that Boise State drops another game. Really hoping that, was really hoping that Colorado State was going to get them. Uh, that did not pan out, obviously. San Diego State has been really bad this year, but I still have hope that they can really pull it together, which they did uh, a couple weeks ago. They they kind of seemed like they were maybe the San Diego State of, of a few seasons ago. I hope they come out and beat Boise State, so I'm going to go ahead and say that we will win the or make it to the conference championship game with the Boise then, loss. Yeah. Uh, cause we're winning out right. and then I'm just going to hope Boise loses and <laughs> believe that they will lose. Uh, so that would put, I, I haven't been super up to date on the, on the bowl games, but if I'm, if I'm going to say that we're fortunate enough to have Boise state lose, then, you know, I'm going to keep being a Homer and say that we're going <laughs> to be Fresno, Fresno state. Obviously. Yeah, and then, uh, so what, what's the bowl that the, that the first place Mountain West conference team, gets? the Vegas bowl, Las Vegas, Vegas bowl. bowl. Okay. Yep. As I thought, I didn't want to throw it out there and be horribly wrong. <laughs> so instead I just admitted that I was too chicken to throw it out there and be horribly wrong. <laughs> All right. So you're going with the Las so Vegas bowl. That's huh? my Homer prediction. And I, and I can like, Totally do that because I'm not on the podcast that's dedicated to football, so no one can fault me if I'm horrible. So we can wrong. just be super homerish and <laughs> and just not do it, and they just have to deal with it. All right, um, you know what? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Las Vegas Bowl as well, but I'm gonna take a little bit of a different path there. Um, I'm gonna save Las Vegas Bowl, but I'm gonna uh, s- say that we're gonna win out. Um, and unfortunately, I think Boise State's going to win out. I have the hope. I think that there's a decent chance that San Diego State could pull something. But I think we're going to win out. And I think that, unfortunately, we're going to be left out of the game, uh, the championship game. But Fresno beat Boise the first time. I think they're going to beat them again with their quarterback being gone. And I think Fresno then takes first place in the Mountain West. However, However they'll, go, they'll to go to a BCS Bowl yeah. game leaving us and Boise State to be second and third. Now, Boise's also gone to Las Vegas for, I can't remember, two, three seasons in a row. We've gone to, to the Potato Bowl two seasons in a row. Um, and I just think that the bowl selection committee is going to be wanting to see how well uh, Utah State fans will travel. I think Las Vegas is the next closest bowl next yeah. to uh, the Potato Bowl. And they're going to say, you know what, we've had Boise come down here. Let's take Utah State. Let's see what. Let's give their fans something, and I think that that's how we're going to reach the Las Vegas Bowl as well. So same bowl, different prediction. That's what I think. And and really, what's important is that we are winning out. Exactly. Well, the the things that we have control over of our destiny, I I think will control them very well. Oh, I totally agree. And that's the thing is that, you know, with with any sport, you have to just control what you can control, and take what take what's given to you. Um, all right, well, Blake, it, it was good to be back. Good to get yes. this get this rolling again. One last thing before we go, 
huge shout out to our sponsors. iFix is again sponsoring our uh, our podcast. I just went yesterday and picked up a, a brand new uh, brand new case for my phone, and it is slick. I'm loving it. Uh, I'm super stoked. Go in talk to uh, talk to the guys at iFix. Mention uh, the USU Junkies podcast. Just say, hey, I'm here for the Junkies discount. He immediately will give you $5 off any repair, any case, uh, any screen protectors, anything you want, $5 off just for mentioning our name. That's off of a, a price that is already really, really good. I've I've had my phone issues in the past, and I am super, super cheap and uh, will research all of my cheapest potential options all the time. And I've been really, really, I've gone to iFix every single time that I've, that I've needed anything just because they're, his prices are actually really, really good. His prices can't be beat, and honestly, his quality is right there. Yep. Yeah, his quality is the best in the Valley by far. I can't say I, I know outside of the Valley, um, but I would assume that he's, he's right at the top outside the Valley as well. Um, Big time, big time supporter of of Utah State Athletics. Big time supporter of the network. Big shout out to iFix. Thanks a ton for sponsoring us. We can't do it without you. Um, and uh, and yeah, Blake, let's let's uh, let's wrap it up. So for uh, USU Junkies, I'm Kyle Haywood, and I'm Blake Hadfield. Go, Go Aggies. Aggies.